in this video, we'll continue our Sesame tutorial. I'm going to show you how we will process IDAS into DNA methylation level data, or the so-called beta values. I'll use two public data sets from the Gene Expression Omnibus, or GEO, for this tutorial. And we all work in a temporary directory. And this is set by dest dir equal to temp dir, and then dest dir, and then sets working directory dest dir. And then we all download these IDAs from the GEO uh, websites within R. And then let's first get the links uh, of these two samples in the associated scripts. So we'll go to the page and then scroll down to the bottom, FTP, copy link, then go back to the RStudio download file, copy the link, and then we're going to use the original file name. And let's do that, do that again for the other file. Download file. Scroll to the bottom, FTP, copy link. Download file. Copy link. Download file. Let's uh, verify the, these downloads by list files pattern equal to star dot i that. So you can see that we have downloaded four i that files. And then two files correspond to the green channel and two for the red channel. The first thing we all do to load is to load sesame if you haven't done that yet by library sesame. And then we are reading the signal intensity data for these i that's using s equal to read i that pair, and then we are going to copy the uh, prefix. So you will notice that the input of this function is the prefix of the files instead of the full file names with the green and the red surface. And then since the red files and green files share the same prefix, and then you only need to specify one prefix per sample, and Sesame will match up the green and red files automatically. So let's take a look at the output of these uh, files uh, by simply typing s in the console. And then you can see that the read IDAP pair function returns an object of class SIGDF. And you can tell that Sesame has correctly identified this IDAP to be from the Epic Array platform. And there are 142,000 Infinite 1 probes and 723,000 Infinite 2 probes and so on. And sometimes you might have a custom-made array instead of a standard epic or mouse array. And to load a custom-made array, you need to provide a manifest that describes the probe information. The easiest way to format that manifest for Sesame will be to follow an example of an internal manifest. For example, let's look at the epic manifest by uh, MFT equal to Sesame data get epic address and ordering. And let's take a look at the head of the MFT variable. And you can see from the result, it's just a simple data frame. And minimally speaking, the manifest file requires only four columns, probe ID, M, U, and code, which stand for color. And with the manifest, let's load the second IDAT, pretending this is a custom-made array. So this is by read IDAT pair. And let's copy over the prefix. And then manifest equal to MFT. So most of the time, uh, you will have multiple samples per experiment. You don't want to manually specify the names of all of these IDATs. So this is where the search IDAT prefixes function will come in handy. It lets you search all the IDAT prefixes 
in a given directory and all their subdirectories so that you don't need to specify IDAT prefixes manually. So one can combine that with the lapply and mclapply function in R to read uh, in a series of these IDATs. These two functions are standard R looping functions, which can be used to return a list of SIGDFs. MCLapply also lets you process IDATs using, using multiple threads concurrently. To do that, we'll need to load the parallel package by library parallel. And then, then uh, we can do MCLapply and search IDAT prefixes. And then we specify the current directory and read IDAT pair MC call equal to two because we have only two files. And then after a while, then you will see that uh, we get both of the IDAT prefixes in the current directory simultaneously processed. And the result is a list of two epic SIGDFs. Once we have the SIGDFs, you will want to perform some quality control. So there are many quality control metrics. Most of these are obtained using Sesame QC S. Here, I especially want to show you how you can assess the quality of your sample by ranking the probe success rates of your sample against all the public samples using the same platform. This is by typing quality rank S rank probe success rate. As you can see, the target sample beats only 17% of the epic samples in terms of probe success rates, which is not terrible, but it's not great either. So next, we can extract the beta values by betas equal to get betas s. And let's look at the result by head betas 20. And notice that if you run get betas function as is, some of the beta values will be NAs. And whether that beta value is NA is determined by the internal mass attributes of the SIGDF, which specifies which probe are considered unreliable and need to be replaced by NA when we turn signal into beta values. And you can see these attributes in SIGDF by simply typing the variable name S in the console. And you can also access it by treating SIGDF as a data frame and access the mask as a column for example, head as dollar sign mask. Or simply count the number of probes currently labeled to be masked in the SIGDF by sum as dollar sign mask. You can see that by default, there are roughly 100,000 probes that are labeled for masking. And you can override that masking by running S0 equal to reset mask S, which returns another SIGDF. And then if you check the mask column again by sum s0 mask, and then you can see that you, uh, you get no masking in the output. There are two major potential causes for a probe to be masked in the first place. One is sample independent masking that labels probes whose reading needs to be interpreted with caution. For example, this could be non-unique mapping or influenced by SNP. And then you can also reestablish this masking by running S1 equal to quality mask S0. And we'll enclose a link to the papers that detail the methods mentioned in this video. Another source of masking we recommend the user to do is masking by detection p-value. This is achieved by, for example, S2 equal to pool bar S1. So PUBA stands for p-value detection using out-of-band probes. So let's check the result by sum S2 mask. And you can see the number of probes had to be masked has increased from 100,000 to 182,000. For a good quality sample, the number of probes to be masked based on detection should be as low as possible. Sometimes one wants to explicitly retrieve the p-values for example, when uh, you are uploading your data to GEO, and you can assign the p-value to p-val variable by p-val equal to puba s return p-val equal to true. And you can then manually set detection-based masking by s3 equal to add mask s1 p-val 
greater than 0.05. So here we are using 0.05 for the threshold. You can use another p-value threshold uh, as you wish. We usually recommend a threshold between 0.05 to 0.2 if you, are compare, if you compare some S3 mask and some S2 mask. And then you can see that the masking using the manual approach is the same as the automatic approach with Puba called directly as shown above. So this shows you masking. It's also recommended that before we get betas, we should perform some signal pre-processing. This is because unlike sequencing data, array data detects molecule abundance by evaluating fluorescent signal intensity. Signal background is hard to avoid regardless of whether there's template DNA. To see this, uh, let's do sesame plot intense versus beta S. So you can see that this creates a density map showing where the probes are located in terms of signal intensity and beta values. In theory, most CPGs should either be fully methylated or fully unmethylated, but you can see that although the beta value do appear to have a bimodal distribution, they are not exactly at zeros and ones. The deviation is greater in probes with smaller signal intensity. To address this, we'll subtract the backgrounds. So this can be done with S4 equal to noob S. So let's check again with the sesame plot intense versus beta S4. You can see that the upper mode is closer to 1 and the lower mode is clo to closer to 0. This makes the methylation level uh, quantitatively closer to the true methylation states of the uh, template DNA. And because methylation array is a two-color channel array, uh, sometimes the global distribution of the green color and that of a red color is not the same. This leads to some bias in DNA methylation reading. So we can see this bias from the, uh, from the asymmetry of the beta value distribution envelope. Or to better illustrate this, you can also contrast the signals of the infinite one green probes and infinite one red probes using sesame beta plots red green QQ S4. And uh, you can see that uh, the dots are not exactly on the diagonal line. You can correct this bias by S5 equal to die bias NA and now S4. So we can check again using sesame plots red, green, QQ, S5. Now you can see that red and green signals are mostly lying on the diagonal. If we run sesame plot intense versus beta S5 again, and you can see the distribution of the beta values are mostly symmetric now. And all of these function calls are, can be combined with LLPI and MCLLPI, and you can chain all of the functions we just described in the video and feed the results into MCLPI and then C bind. For example, we can do betas equal to do call C bind MCLPI search i that prefixes function px, which stands for prefix, get betas die bias. Bias NL, noob, puba, read IDAC, IDAT, PX. MC call equal to 2. So C binds binds beta values column wise into a matrix. So if you run hat betas, and then you can see that now we are getting this beta value matrix with probes as rows and the columns, samples as columns. And NA suggests that the probes is masked for either detection or some other issue, such as masking. This entire workflow is equivalent to the open sesame workflow. For example, you can do betas 2 equal to open sesame current directory. 
you can check this is equivalent to our previous results by all betas equal to betas 2 and they remove equal to true. And so if you want a one function solution, open sesame is the function you will need. But you would like to have more control over each step, you can use the more verbose version as we just described. So there you have it. This is how you can use sesame to pre-process IDAS into DNA methylation level. In the next videos, we'll continue to discuss several DNA methylation-based inference and data analysis.